Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to simulate a supersonic um, re-entry space capsule uh, with open foams, uh, sonic foam solver. Um, so this solver is a little different from the incompressible solvers in that, um, in my experience, it's a little harder to get working and um, it has no max current number condition, so you have to specify the time step uh, manually, um, and and it's not really dynamic to my knowledge. So it's a fixed time step. Um, so here are the case files we have. Um, the mesh.go is a single script that generates the whole mesh that we're going to use for the simulation, and this case folder contains all of the open foam specific. Um, files needed to run this uh, simulation. So let's first look at the mesh and you can see here um, this is a wedge so you can see that uh, it converges to a single to a singular singularity here and we have um, a wedge shape um, and uh, this is the inlet surface right here where flow comes in at a supersonic speed and this is the outlet um, and we've set this uh, outer boundary as simply a slip uh, boundary <coughs> and this here is the actual capsule which is a very rough shape um, as you can see it's got just this round bottom with a sharp corner here and a sharp corner there um, you, if you really wanted to design a, a run a good simulation um, you'd probably round it out here but uh, for simplicity I just set it as a, as a sharp corner it's a fairly simple, straightforward to modify um, and so let's look at the actual mesh oh, and I forgot to mention that this is the line of symmetry I mean if that really even needs to be mentioned so here you can see we're using a fully unstructured triangular mesh and um, I've got this sort of uh, curious behavior um, going, refinement going on here um, so I've used a special char uh, characteristic of Gmesh called um, uh, a mesh field and this is really useful in creating a structured boundary layer basically so I can choose this uh, distance where the, the mesh becomes refined and quickly um, becomes coarse um, in order to achieve a good grid efficiency, that is to put all the grid points where you want them and not to have too much excess. Um, so I've, I've put it this far ahead because we, c we will expect a shock to form a, about right here and we want that to be resolved so we, pu we put it within the fine mesh here. Um, I actually go over in another video how to make this um, uh, mesh field um, so please check that video out if you're interested. Alright so go, having gone over the mesh we can mm, start to run our simulation so this is these are our case files um, if you've just downloaded them from the from the repository and our first uh, task will be to which I've the commands for which I've I've put in the readme. Our first task will be to generate the actual gmesh uh, output. So as you can see, test.mesh was created, and now we want to convert that to open foam format. And now it is in open foam format, and we just need to make one modification to the polymesh constant boundary file within the case directory. Um, let me see here. Yes. Yeah, so, right. Um, Okay, here we go. Um, so yeah, so they should already patch and you have to change them to their appropriate boundary conditions. So here 
we'll change the wedge uh, patches, which are the front and back, basically, um, uh, of that wedge slice I showed. And the tunnel as slip. And the vehicle as a wall. And now we've done that, we can run the simulation. It's as easy as that. And as you can see, it's running along. Um, uh, the case that I've set up takes um, really only like about 10 or 20 minutes to converge uh, on a single processor on my desktop. So it's, it's not too bad. Um, I do want to say a few things about the numerical settings because it did take me a little while to get something that converged. Um, um, I, I had a lot of problems with stability, so um, what I did was use an upwind, a first order upwind scheme for all of the spatial uh, derivatives. Um, you can use the second order. These, this is the default in the tutorial case I got from the OpenFarm repository. And I even tried a linear upwind, which is a second order variant of upwind. But I wasn't really able to achieve a reasonable stability with, with these two settings. But you can try and sort of mess around with this and see if you get any better results if you need it. And yeah, here you can see there's no max current number definition. It's all just... Uh, a fixed delta t. Um, yeah, and, and uh, I also changed the turbulence model to k epsilon because I saw that the default one, which was a Londra Sharma for me at least, was was somehow giving um, problems. Um, but yeah, and uh, we'll take a quick look at the inputs. I've set it up so that this is included in all of the um, zero files, so you can sort of have all your parameters in one place. You can see that this was at 825 meters per second, which is about Mach 2.5 or something, um, with given this temperature. And remember, you can calculate the Mach number with the formula square root gamma RT, where gamma is the ratio of specific heats, which is 1.4 for normal air. Um, R is the gas constant, and T is, of course, the temperature. And this is the pressure, which is quite low, because we're sort of simulating an upper atmosphere and these are just the turbulence model variables, which I've initialized to some dummy value. I don't have a really reason for these particular values. Um, but anyways, that's all there is to it to simulate a, a space capsule reentry and open foam. I hope you learned something from this video, and happy foaming.